How did mankind first invent written numbers? What purpose did written numbers first serve? What process of thought is required to invent systems of written numbers in a society where people have only recently just learned to count? Let's answer these questions here on Inductica. <laughs> So as we discussed in our last video, the Babylonian people have now settled into a village between two rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates River, and they're starting to trade with one another. And it's in this situation of trade that the need for written numbers first emerges. Motivation. Our second character of our story is going to be Ram. Ram is a fur trader who lives out in the woods near Babylon. Ram traps animals, he skins them, and he trades them in town for various necessities he needs for his family. Now, each time he travels into town, he doesn't sell everything. Sometimes he has a few furs left over. So he takes these furs, maybe rabbit furs, wolf furs, these sorts of wild animals that get caught in his traps. He takes those furs and he puts them into a stockpile that he keeps back at his house. Now, sometimes when he comes into town, he's able to get rid of all of his furs, but then certain people say, hey, when you come back into town, can you make sure you get three rabbit skins for me? Remember, they have the word three now because they came up with number words in the last video. Can you make sure you bring me three rabbit furs? And so Ram says, yeah, I can do that. So he just memorizes the number. Okay, three. I got to come back and I got to give Grull his three rabbit skins. And... The problem with this method is, is after a while, it becomes hard to remember. It becomes hard to remember, okay, how many did Grohl want? How many did Algamesh want? You know, he's got to keep track of all these different numbers. Now, he can't use counting stones either. This is a method that a lot of people back then would be using. If they need to keep track of a quantity, they just have a bag and they put the rocks in the bag. But what is he going to do? Keep around a bunch of bags, it's gonna get confusing. So Rom realizes that he can use something that a lot of people have started doing in Babylon, which is writing. People have found clay in the ground and they found that they can form the clay into this rectangle and make marks on the clay to keep track of information. So that leads Rom to the following question. How can quantities be represented in writing? Now, what Ram is gonna do is he's gonna take his tablet and he's gonna come up with a symbol for a rabbit. He's gonna come up with a symbol for wolves, for sheeps, etc. And he's gonna make individual marks underneath each of those furs to show how many furs he needs to bring back into town in order to satisfy his customers. So what Ram is doing is he's actually using quantitative comparison. He's using the method that Marduk came up with in our first video, because he knows that if he puts enough marks into that tablet for each of the furs that are being requested, then that means there's one mark for each desired fur. Now, after a while, he starts keeping track of his stocks, the amount of furs he has back at home. He's going to start keeping track of these stocks using the same method. He's going to get a second tablet and he's going to start marking. So after a while, as his business starts to expand, he's going to have a lot of furs of each of the different types. So he might just mark da -da 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 -da, just a ton of marks. Now, after a while, he might run out of number words that actually keeps track of the quantity of these different goods that he wants to trade with other people. You know, he still has a record of it. He still knows how many are demanded or how many he has in stock. At least he has like marks that represent them, but he isn't able to quickly get some idea of how many there are. Remember, we don't have number words that go beyond 20. So as a result, all he can say is, is like, I got a lot of these, or like, I need to bring a lot of these into town. I got to bring this many. It doesn't allow him to understand it intuitively, but he has a solution. He realizes that he can condense the information through the following method. When he's making his marks into the tablet, whenever he makes four marks, he can make a fifth mark across the first four. This is a modern tally mark. And what he's doing is, is he's grouping his units in groups of five. Now, what is this going to be able to do? Let's say that he writes down seven groups of five and three. Maybe it'll look like this. What Rom can then do is he can count the groups of five and then count that remaining group of three. And he can now get an intuitive sense of how many furs of that type he has. How many wolf furs do I have? I have, he counts them, seven fives and three. 
Seven fives and three wolf furs. What he has done now is he has used marking, he's used grouping, and he's used the method of counting in order to grasp even larger quantities. So what quantitative method have we invented here? Conclusion. Quantities can be identified by creating marks that represent the units of a group, then grouping those marks into groups of five. One then counts the number of groups of five and the number of units that don't belong to a group of five. One can then identify the quantity by stating the number of groups of five, then the number of ungrouped units. So for example, you can say, I have seven fives and three wolf skins. Closing remarks. I keep coming back to this issue of the unit limit, the fact that man's brain is feeble, that it can only tell the difference between six and seven things, and that the only way our brains really gain power over the world is by using certain methods of condensing all of that complexity into smaller and smaller things. And this is our first method of condensation. Ram has come up with a way of grouping five into one. He has this one symbol that represents five. And using this method, how far can he get? We, you know, he start without numbers. We can only understand the difference between six and seven. I would say now that Ram could understand the difference between 99 and 100. He has counting and counting can get us to about 20. So he can count out 20 groups of five and he can differentiate that from 19 groups of five and one group of four. So he's able to figure out the difference between 99 and 100. Now, using 99 and 100 here to help you understand that is a little deceiving because 100 is 10 groups of 10 and 99 is you know nine groups of 10 and nine ones. He wouldn't be able to think of it that way, but he can grasp these quantities by understanding groups of five and counting out the differences between those two groups of five. So we can see that we've gone from barely being able to understand seven things to being able to understand systematically about a hundred things. Rom's technique here has expanded the power of the human mind by about 20 times. So if you'd like to see the next chapter of this epic mathematical journey, hit subscribe or watch the next video in this series to find out how Rom uses this power of compression to expand the power of the mind another hundred times over. This video is part of a longer series dedicated to reproving the essential ideas of math and physics by showing an actual process of observation and reasoning steps scientists could have taken to prove these conclusions. Observational proofs, also known as inductive proofs, give us a deeper, reality-based understanding of these abstract ideas and demonstrate the proper method of scientific proof. This series starts with cavemen counting rocks and will continue all the way to the frontiers of quantum and relativistic phenomena. This epic story will proceed in a possible order of discovery, since science always progresses by reasoning about observations using what has been discovered earlier. To discover the long-term goal and the true power of this project, visit my channel page for more information. To see the playlist for this series or to see my channel, just click on the links on the screen. Finally, if you'd like more lectures like this, just go to patreon.com slash inductica. For just $5 a month, you gain access to the written rigorous forms of these proofs, as well as my 34-hour lecture series, An Inductive Summary of Physics. I'll see you in the next video as this inductive journey continues.